So a little bit about who I am. Uh, so my name is Carsten, as Liz nicely stated. Uh, I'm a senior systems engineer and I work at uh, IKEA Retail, the Inca Group. Uh, it's a franchise for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm working in our cloud hybrid private uh, team, mainly focusing around uh, on-prem data centers uh, and also service mesh technologies and things like that. Uh, I'm a firm believer in KISS, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, it makes uh, your life easier, at least when you work in infrastructure. And then I've been working in different things around. Uh, so lately, I've joined the Cilium contributor list. Um, so who are we? Uh, the Inca Group operates 300 and... Uh, 79 IKEA stores in 31 countries. Uh, we have more than 170,000 co-workers. Um, and in fiscal year 22, we had a total revenue of 30, 42 billion euros. And we saw some 680 million visitors to our stores and also 3.8 uh, billion visitors to our website. Um, and the team that I'm working in is uh, the digital uh, team within Inca and we create the digital experience of the IKEA uh, experience for the many people and that includes uh, customers and co-workers, financial systems, etc. We're currently around 3,000 people uh, and if you're interested we are hiring so you can visit our website on joininca.com. So let's get into it. I um, have some topics to discuss today. Uh, like most enterprises, uh, we started out in on-prem, is uh, having um, been built for operational purposes rather than consumption. So it included a lot of change process. Uh, heavy, like if you wanted to have a VM, it could take weeks. If you wanted to have network to that VM, it also took weeks, etc. So if you're looking at it, it's uh, it's a typical case of how you used to work before cloud um, and, and things would like uh, and team members and developers especially would like to have that so uh, our modernization journey uh, has moved us towards the public cloud uh, but an old company like uh, IKEA you just don't move everything we had a non lift and shift policy so we had to uh, create new services around in order to get this uh, up and running. Uh, some of the unwanted design that would happen from this case was to have the front end deployed to cloud and all the back end, uh, including data sitting around in data centers, uh, leaving uh, traffic patterns that was not really interesting uh, from that case. Uh, it also created a much larger failure domain. Uh, since you're stretching, you're more or less you're stretching your data center from on-prem to cloud. So we needed a, a cloud-like experience on-prem to unlock the development teams. Um, so it's pretty easy uh, to set up a Kubernetes environment on-prem these days uh, through VMware or Nutanix or other platforms that supports uh, running uh, VMs. But we didn't really have a good VM experience, like I just told you, uh, pretty involved. Um, and then also we would like to get out of some of the classical networking challenges that you're always pointing fingers at someone else because it's always like the, the networking team to blame or the firewall or lately we have heard about DNS a lot, right? So uh, all of these problems we wanted to kind of get out of uh, to have a, a more consumable networking uh, infrastructure. Uh, there's always the case that it's kind of an illusion that you don't have any dependencies because you have dependencies to everything, right? You have your dependencies to the laptop, as I just showed. It, it, when it doesn't work, you just, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also like you need to be involved with, like you have internet, you have upstream, downstreams, etc. So you have a lot of dependencies. Uh, it might not be as easy to get out of. So in order to get kind of the foundation right, we, we um, we have a critical infrastructure like any company or other place, uh, like the, the infrastructure, the, the foundation needs to be right, otherwise it's not really going to work out for you at all. 
Um, so the first thing is that we run our infrastructure as hyper-converged. Uh, that means that we run networking, uh, storage, uh, compute, all on the same box. Uh, then we run software on top of that, uh, so we can basically run uh, non-branded hardware in this setup, so we get out of uh, dependencies towards vendor login and other things uh, that we're just, just quote-unquote, dependent on software. Uh, in this stack is based on Kubernetes, Cilium, Bird, which is a routing daemon, and then Ceph for, for storage. Uh, we also manage this uh, through some of the other CNCF projects with uh, Metal Free and Cluster API. Uh, we're doing that with uh, GitOps uh, and then tied together with Argo CD. Um, but we're going to focus around the networking piece uh, in this talk. Uh, so network is uh, like one of the key things to get right. If you cannot get the bits across the wire, then what's the point? Uh, so uh, we really needed to, to look at that also to get out of the, the blame game uh, so that at least we have a visibility into our network for our development teams. Uh, we needed new, uh, vendor neutral uh, networking stack uh, so we could uh, build around uh, and choose software instead of uh, proprietary software uh, hardware protocols. Uh, good performance is always a, a must. Also, when you move into Kubernetes and microservices, uh, you get a lot more east-west traffic. Um, we need an easy scale-out. Uh, we are a small team, uh, and we intend to stay that, that way. Uh, so our scaling uh, characteristics of, of the network should be the same as uh, the uh, the, the software that we try to deploy, so it should be scale out rather than scale up. Uh, so we're not really interested in buying new uh, switches whenever there's a, a faster switch coming out with 500 gig networking or so. Uh, so we wanted to scale out. We wanted to have easy consumption. So things like uh, ingress load balancing and network policies uh, so that uh, all software defined. And then we needed to integrated into our legacy systems. It's, it's a modernization journey. It's not a fully replacement, so we need to coexist the environments uh, for a long period of time. Uh, and then also, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, IPv4 exhaustion can happen in our environment. We have like the 400 stores and different cloud providers and other things that we run. So we have a lot of uh, consumption around network. Um, so the implementation pit, um, we chose to go with BGP uh, and uh, ECMP uh, to, to get uh, redundancy uh, and scalability. Uh, multi, uh, it's, uh, ECMP is equal cost multipath, so it actually enables you to run multiple NICs uh, and add more NICs if you, if you have a scaling problem, uh, like if you want to read up on, on high scale uh, networking uh, uh, like there's uh, different art articles around from Facebook and other cloud providers, uh, how they do networking. Um, and then since we are at CiliumCon, we're going to talk about all the Cilium features that we use uh, in our setup. So we have Cilium deployed. We also use Hubble to get the visibility. We're using uh, the integration between Cilium and BTP uh, and also the newly feature, the the LB IPAM module that is being put, come up with, I think it was 1.13. Um, then also we're using the ingress uh, capabilities of the Cilium service mesh as well as the egress uh, gateway. And, and uh, we're using the cluster pool IPV uh, version 2 uh, as it has a lot of uh, needed uh, functionality around how to save IPs uh, when you run in a uh, in a setup like ours. Um, and then let's go into the assembly part. Uh, some of you might recognize the format. Uh, so we have an IKEA cloud native uh, assembly manual. It has uh, Cilium, uh, and Cilium brings uh, Envoy. And then we're using Kubernetes. Um, and for this assembly, uh, you would need a, a Git with some um, with a bunch of um, with a bunch of YAML, your favorite programming language, uh, 
we chose to use Argo CD, you could bring all of your Flux CD if you rather use that one. Uh, we use Metal Free and then also Ansible. Uh, and if you have problems uh, assembling this, uh, we, have to, we are on Slack. Uh, so maybe we can answer some of your questions. Um, so you have your IKEA bookshelf and then you start by putting in some switches and putting them together. Um, we need to uh, put in our servers as well and connect them with the switches. Um, we use uh, Ansible to, to set up our switching infrastructure. Uh, we're, using, uh, we're setting it up with uh, some VRFs and uh, some BTP configuration. Uh, VRF is a, is a way to virtualize your switch environment. Uh, so you can run multiple routing tables and like, looks the same, but they can coexist uh, with this technology. Uh, and then since uh, we're actually using Cilium, uh, we're putting in this uh, cluster API config to get our Kubernetes environment up and running. We're using, uh, so Metal Free comes with the Kube ADM plugin from Cluster API, uh, and we're using the uh, user data um, to put in our bird configuration. And since we're one running um, uh, hyper-converged, we need the servers to, to become routers before we can actually install Kubernetes. Uh, so we're putting the bird configuration uh, on top of that. Uh, and then we're also adding the BTP control plane when we install um, uh, Cilium. We're peering with local host as we have uh, bird, the routing daemon running on all nodes in our environment. So we can peer Cilium with local host uh, uh, as you can only have one peer out of a given uh, uh, server. So let's look at a little, it's always nice to take a step back and look at what you've built so far and maybe take a coffee break. Um, so we can see that we have now set up our uh, bird peering with our leaves uh, and psyllium. We can also see from our management setup that uh, the pod networking uh, is actually also present uh, in in our management server and it has the ECMP environment so you have two routes for the same network. Um, so all is good. Let's move on to the IPAM uh, which is uh, always enabled. Uh, so all you need to do is actually just add a pool to Cilium. Um, so we have done that. We, we are running a single pool in this case and also um, we enabled ingress in the same step to get uh, both uh, layer four and layer seven uh, load balancing capabilities. Uh, we are using the Cilium uh, Helm chart and that comes with built-in capabilities of uh, enabling the Hubble UI. Uh, and I guess some of you can recognize it, but we're also using uh, a cert manager to provision our certificates uh, in this case. Um, and then again, we'll have a look at what we have to now. So we have, uh, like I said previously, uh, uh, KISS is always good. So we keep it to a single uh, pool uh, as, we, uh, as we don't have a strict need to actually run multiple pools and be, ab and be able for our tenants to consume different types of pools. So we have like just a single one. Uh, and again, it has uh, redundancy with the ECMP functionality and also we can get better performance uh, with that. Uh, so again, we can, if we run out of uh, bandwidth, we can always just add multi more path to our BTP environment and then you will have more capacity. Then for ingress, um, when you enable Hubble, you, you will also get ingress um, set up. Um, we use a shared uh, uh, ingress type uh, as we it will save your uh, IP uh, consumption. Uh, when you use shared, you, you will get a single IP that is being used for all uh, ingress configuration. And um, uh, with that uh, approach, you can also have like problems if you override the same configurations, of course, so you have to be somewhat careful when you do this. Uh, 
Um, but anyway, it will it's an effective way for for us to to create these two uh, uh, load balancing features. Uh, we uh, before we had this uh, in, in, in Kubernetes, we had uh, external load balancing uh, features, and, and that was uh, not really uh, a nice integration path to have observability like that, because you don't really you have disconnected uh, systems uh, with uh, different ways of doing uh, traffic patterns and other things. Uh, Hubble has a nice integration uh, uh, for this, uh, so you can actually see your flows showing up in Hubble. Uh, and then uh, we're moving on to egress uh, as one of the key features that we also need. Uh, so we run multi-tenant environments. Uh, and uh, when you do that, uh, you know when you run Kubernetes, uh, you usually you're using node uh, IP ranges to, to exit your cluster for external traffic. Um, it's not really feasible to allow all or nothing uh, in towards your uh, other on-prem environment, so the egress uh, gateway allows us to create policies. Uh, and in this is, uh, in this example, we have uh, set up a demo namespace that gets an IP, and we're routing all internet, so as zero slash zero uh, side arrange, in order to get all traffic leaving the cluster to be uh, matched by this policy. Um, this gives us predictable uh, IP addresses uh, towards our um, end consumers. Uh, that's really needed when you are, uh, are setting up your legacy firewalls uh, to protect. Uh, usually that's an IP enabled feature. Uh, so we can actually do this. Uh, we can also be more fine grained if you want to run more uh, egress gateways, you can easily do that. Um, and for the IP um, exhaustion, uh, we, as I said, we enabled this, uh, this uh, cluster pool v2 in order to to get the ability uh, to to um, limit the amount of IPs that is actually used. Um, and in our case. Um, we are actually using pretty large worker nodes, uh, so we can run up uh, more than 500 pods on each node. Uh, so in order to to uh, assign enough IPs to those uh, nodes, uh, you'll need a pretty large uh, networking segment uh, to attach to every, um, every node. Uh, that can leave uh, a lot of waste. Um, especially because we're also running uh, kubevert in order to run VMs on these uh, environments. Uh, so if you have a, a node that will run uh, maybe 10 VMs instead of 500 pods, you have a lot of uh, IP waste uh, if you're not running uh, IPv or uh, cluster pool v2, which actually enables you to, to slice your network in much smaller uh, network segments and, and Cilium will make sure that it actually um, gives you back your IPs uh, back into the greater pool. So it, it brings a lot of flexibility. Uh, so we we solve so like major things with this uh, integration. Yeah? I, I sp spoke way too fast. I guess I became a little nervous. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we have plenty of time for Q&A if Can you? Okay. Um, thank you very much. And we have about five minutes for questions. If you if you have questions. Yeah. Hi. Um, my name is Sangamitra. I have been using Kubernetes for the last three four years around. And uh, regarding networking, so I see that you are creating a load balancer and other stuff. So is it the new Nginx Ingress? Is it going to replace 
or is it the new Calico uh, uh, for the network policies? So what is the, what is the viewpoint of Cilium? What is the scope like you guys are targeting to? Uh, I couldn't really hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So is it, is it going to replace the market of Nginx, what we use in Kubernetes, for creation of ingress and ing egress? Or is it going to, uh, it's, kind of it's kind of a creation of uh, network policies, like we have Calico and Azure CNI, um, VPC CNI, like that. So what is the scope of Cilium Con? Are you gonna incorporate these two combinations for the overall networking of Kubernetes uh, architecture? Or, yeah, so that's my question. Uh, was your question if we're using Nginx as Ingress together are, with- Are you gonna replace Nginx Ingress? Yeah, so currently we are leveraging the, the, uh, the Cilium Ingress capability. So we don't have any Nginx running for, for Ingress. Uh, we're also using Cilium's uh, networking policies, uh, so you, you wouldn't really need to have Calico uh, for that uh, either. So that means that whether my platform is in Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, I can get read of Nginx and I can get Cilium for both network policies plus for the ingress and egress traffic, right? So I'm not re so someone is nodding. <laughs> uh, I haven't been using Cilium that much in cloud, so I wouldn't be able to answer, but the people that have is nodding. You can use Cilium uh, for those capabilities. Uh, usually with cloud providers, you have in, uh, a, the ability to consume the cloud provider load balancer. Uh, so, so for some use cases, that might be uh, more interesting, uh, but we're using Cilium for that piece. Hi. Um, you specifically said that you are using the Cilium Ingress controller, but um, or from the Cilium service mesh. But are you also using the service mesh capabilities, or are you using something else for service mesh, or no service mesh at all? Or uh, currently, we are only using the Cilium Ingress controller from service mesh. Um, we have a quite uh, how do you say? Uh, involved uh, service mesh uh, story that Cilium doesn't support yet. Uh, that's, uh, I had a comment around the cluster mesh that will at least solve some of our problems with using the Cilium service mesh. Um, so that might be interesting to look into for us at least. Thanks. But then again, you, you get like features with Hubble that you would also have like this observability. That's usually one of the, the key things that people are using for service mesh, uh, at least initially. They want to have observability in their service, uh, microservices environment. So you actually get that for free just by installing Cilium and using Hubble. Uh, so. Hi. Uh, in terms of uh, efforts, timelines, how long does setting up something like that would take? And what are the difficulties? Maybe like uh, people in the organization, the network people, how would they accept like something like that? I want to do this kind of project, let's say. Yeah, so... Um to, to show this off, it has been a multi-year journey, especially with the people. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I, like for us, it hasn't been a, an easy path. It has been, uh, I, don't, I, I wouldn't use the word shadow IT, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, get the right people in the organization, uh, get them interested in this piece, because it's actually as we're removing some of the obstacles, we're also getting into like, uh, this is our domain, so why are you bringing on this functionality in, in your area? Uh, so we had spent a lot of time. It's also why we're using Git, because then you can use pull requests and you can have code owners, uh, so you can uh, actually 
give back the, the responsibility of key infrastructure pieces. We can do that with code owners in Git, and then you can have include like a networking team to actually be the persons involved in, in, in those areas. So they keep, uh, keep kind of the responsibility for that uh, area. It makes it easier. Uh, it also requires quite a bit because usually uh, te those teams at least uh, at, at Inca hasn't been used to working with Git and pull requests, uh, so they have been used to other tools uh, from other vendors uh, and how, so there has been a lot of learning uh, in different teams in order to kind of get into this setup. Oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much again uh, for, for, for your talk.